Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to explore five objects in our galaxy relatively close to our planet Earth that have a very very high potential to be Earth-like and to maybe even have habitable conditions for us humans to actually survive. Let's discuss those planets and welcome to What The Math. Now, two of these planets you probably heard a lot about, and uh, we actually can probably cover them pretty quickly because I've talked about these two relatively um, frequently in many videos. The first uh, planet is the closest exoplanet to us. It's an exoplanet uh, about 4.2 light years away from our own planet Earth, known as Proxima Centauri b. The recent studies uh, actually showed us that despite this being a relatively inhospitable star system, the planet itself might actually be quite hospitable to human life, and it's located in the habitable zone. It's basically um, a planet that has potentially a lot of water on the surface, and it might even be a wonderful tropical world. Do check out the video I made about this object previously to learn more about Proxima Centauri b. Now, another object that's been a lot in the news is actually several objects. And that's actually in the system of TRAPPIST-1. There are at least seven objects we discovered here, all of them terrestrial planets, and at least a few of them have quite a lot of water, even liquid water on the surface. And this one right here, uh, TRAPPIST-1e, might be very, very, very similar to planet Earth. Although in some studies it's often uh, mentioned that it's more of a super mercury than it is an Earth. Anyway, TRAPPIST-1, once again, is a system with a lot of potentially habitable planets. Now let's visit three more systems, some of them, or possibly all of them, you may have never heard of before. And we're going to start with uh, the one that has a very interesting planet there. At a distance of about uh, 41 light years away from our planet, um, lies a system known as LHS-1140. Um, the system itself is not really that interesting, it's basically yet another red dwarf. But the planet around it is extremely, extremely um, interesting to us as a species. And the reason why this particular system is actually so interesting to us is because we recently discovered two more objects, two more candidates um, right in the system, although none of them are in the habitable zone. Um, but this one, known as LHS-1140b, is in the habitable zone. Unfortunately, though, it's... Um, maybe a little bit too massive and a little bit too big compared to our planet Earth. It's what's known as a super Earth. As a matter of fact, this object here is um, approximately six times more massive than our planet and about two times uh, more dense. Its density is actually very high, suggesting there is a lot of metal and also suggesting that it has a very unusual composition. But at the same time, it lies in the habitable zone of its star system and it also potentially has atmosphere, maybe even liquid water, and a lot of other things that we're going to be discovering when James Webb Telescope actually gets to see this as this planet passes in front of its star, and we get to actually see what the atmosphere is made up of right here in this region on the screen. Uh, so this is going to be very exciting, we'll finally get to settle the uh, question of what actually happens around these red dwarfs and most importantly answer the question of how habitable this planet really is. Now, the problem with this planet is that because it's so massive, if we land on it, we're gonna have a lot of trouble getting back up. The gravity on the surface here mixed with the fact that um, this is basically a super Earth and any kind of atmosphere that might be here would actually prevent us from ever lifting again unless we find a different technique to what we have now, which are, you know, the typical rockets. So rocket uh, landing here will probably stay here for a very long time. The fourth object we're going to visit is referred to as Gliese 3293. Uh, there are actually four terrestrial planets here, uh, and this is once again a, another red dwarf, uh, but two of these planets are in the habitable zone once again. So this planet here, Gliese 3293b, and this right here, Gliese 3293d, are both uh, within the habitable zone of uh, the star. Now, all four objects in this system are actually relatively massive. As a matter of fact, this, these might not even be um, super Earths. These might be similar to Neptune and Uranus, specifically. Um, this planet right here is about 20 masses of our um, own Earth. Although a moon around 
this object or any moons in the system would actually very likely be habitable. But then, nevertheless, even if these are actually really massive Neptune-like objects, it would be really interesting for us to find out what happens to these objects if you place them in a habitable zone. In other words, are these basically just extremely large water worlds, or do these look like what you see on the screen? Very small Jupiters. And because th this system was actually only discovered uh, with its planets only a few months ago, we don't really have answers to these questions yet. But once again, studying these objects will allow us to understand not just exoplanets and how they evolve, but maybe even help us discover some really cool things here, including moons that are habitable. And the last object we're going to take a look at is once again a system with two planets in it. Uh, and this is the second closest star system with exoplanets that are potentially habitable after Proxima Centauri, at a distance of about, about 12.8 light years away from us. Uh, this is known as the uh, Luton Star, also known as Gliese 273. This system actually has, uh, like I said, two planets. Both of them are extremely interesting, and both of them located either within the habitable zone or very, very close to the habitable zone. So the closer planet right here, and that's Gliese 273C, also known as Luton Star C, um, is actually on the innermost edge of the habitable zone. And this is by far one of the closest to Earth in terms of mass uh, planets we've discovered. Um, it's really, really close to us compared to other stars. It's also um, exceptionally Earth-like in its composition and mass. Although it does have relatively high eccentricity compared to Earth at about 17% eccentricity. Although, as you can see from this particular simulation, this is what happens to this type of a planet if you add a tremendous amount of greenhouse effect. It basically turns into a Venus-like super hell with a huge, huge temperature of about 1000 degrees Celsius. But if this planet has a relatively thin atmosphere, um, even being relatively close to its star would actually allow it to have habitable conditions possibly liquid water, and once again, we need to study this more, but maybe even conditions where you can totally walk around without any kind of protection whatsoever, especially if it has um, atmosphere and maybe even some oxygen. Now, because this particular planet gives us so much promise, as a matter of fact, it's one of the most promising exoplanets out there with potentially either life or uh, conditions for life. Um, very recently, I believe back in 2017, an interesting arts project called uh, Sonar Calling 273B uh, was actually launched uh, in Europe, specifically in Barcelona, where they essentially sent um, a bunch of um, information like music, um, different types of codes and scientific and mathematical tutorials and so on uh, to the system. And essentially with the only hope of getting a response back. And if we do get a response, if it's basically right away, you know, someone here that sends something back, we'll hear back from the system in 2036 because it will take about 12.7 uh, years for light to travel there. And by the time it comes back, uh, it will be 2036. And the second object here, which is referred to by its um, name 273b, is most likely once again a super Earth with a mass of about 2.8 masses of Earth. Once again, very similarly to other exoplanets, it still has a high potential of being habitable and having liquid water and so on, as long as it has the um, necessary protection on the surface to protect it from various flares coming off its parent star. At the same time, like, like in the previous example, if we land here, we're going to have trouble getting out because the gravity here is relatively high compared to Earth, and also because we just don't have the necessary technology um, ready yet to be able to escape these planets with relatively high gravity. Anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to introduce you to these five systems with potentially uh, habitable exoplanets in the habitable zone that may even have either developed their own life or develop a life from Earth if it ever comes here. Uh, these planets are really exciting. We're going to be able to study them with the James Webb Telescope in the next few years, especially once it basically launches. And uh, once it's all ready for our studies, we'll be able to understand how the atmosphere works on these planets and maybe finally launch some sort of a mission here. Until then, though, our only hope is to kind of dream and explore and maybe send more signals to these planets. And in 2036, maybe we'll even hear back from this star system known as Gliese 273. 
Anyway, until then, or I guess until we have more news about these uh, star systems, we're going to finish this here. And thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something about these exoplanets out there. If you still haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button and maybe even support the channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. And most importantly, come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.